Nation. Join us now for Family Mix Monday with licensed professional counselor, Jaquitra Bryant. Tune in as Jaquitra shows the different dynamics that make up families. Whether you represent the nuclear family, single parent, extended, grandparent, or blended family, Jaquitra has tips and advice designed to strengthen your family structure. Source Nation, here is your host, Jaquitra Bryant. Good evening, Source Nation. I am your host, Jakeetra Bryant, and I want to welcome you to Family Mix Mondays, which is a show where I'll be discussing breaking cycles that are happening within our families and and building them back up so that we can just really have better relationships with our children, um, our parents, just across the board. And tonight is no different. I will be continuing my series of Parenting a Child with Special Needs. And I wanted to give you it from different angles. So tonight's guest is going to blow your mind with his um, drive to really just bypass all odds that worked against him. And so after the break, I'll be back with our special guest to continue our series of Parenting a Child with Special Needs. Source Nation, stay tuned. You're listening live to Family Mix Monday with your host, Jaquitra Bryant. Source Radio Network is just one of the many platforms that is used to fulfill dreams of our listeners and create a purpose that will impact the lives of our community, city, and the world. It is often said that great things will happen when a group of driven people work together to accomplish one goal. We are giving people the opportunity to have a voice, translate words that haven't been heard, and paint pictures that no one has seen. Source Radio Network is fueling your life's purpose. How can you listen? www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash source Radio. Welcome back, Source Nation. You're listening live to Family Mix Monday with your host, Jaquitra Bryant. Welcome back, Source Nation. I'm your host, Jakeetra Bryant. Before the break, I said that we are doing our series of Parenting a Child with Special Needs. And tonight we have our Taylor Duncan. So before he joins me in the studio for an awesome conversation, I want to take a moment to just tell you a little bit about him. So he is 21 years old, um, and he's from Atlanta, Georgia. He was diagnosed with autism as a child, and he has managed to break social and physical barriers time and time again. He has also managed to turn his disability into an ability. He is the founder and commissioner of the Alternative Baseball Organization, a developmental baseball organization for teens and adults with autism and special needs. He has been featured on numerous radio stations and affiliates of all four major television networks. In addition, the Alternative Baseball Organization has an exhibit right now on display at the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame in Macon, Georgia. Talking to you today about his life with autism, as well as everything Alternative Baseball offers, this is Taylor Clark Duncan. So, hello, Taylor. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on the show today, uh, Jaquitra. Thank you so much. I'm doing well. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so before we jump into our conversations, you know, we've been discussing a series called Parenting um, a Child with Special Needs, and tonight we're going to just do a lot with just educating them about autism and your experience, and before we do that, um, tell First Nation just a little bit more about you, just some things you would like them to know. Well, I was diagnosed with autism myself when, around the age of four. I experienced speech, sensory and anxiety issues as well as some other things that I had that was associated with autism when I was much younger. Thanks to the help from my mother, my teachers, my mentors, and most 
sir, most importantly, the Lord up above, I've been able to get to where I am today, which is to hopefully inspire as many as I can that's on the spectrum and with special needs to be the best they can be and to teach folks all around the world about what autism is and what it can mean and the, and the good sides of having it. Oh, yes. I'm so glad that you decided to join me. And so I wanted to start off by just really just getting um, a, a lot um, better view of who you are. And so what age were you first diagnosed that parents and other specialists actually began to talk to your parents about you having this diagnosis of autism? I believe I was diagnosed around the age of four at the Marcus Center at Emory. I think it's in Midtown, Midtown Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm familiar with that place. I remember them. And what was your parents and peers' understanding of what autism was or is? Do you remember? Well, my mother basically said, basically made the goal to help me get to be as independent as I can be and she's done just done a phenomenal job with that and she's done every little bit of research research that was possible to do way back then and even now she continues to help me through what I'm trying to do with the organization and trying to get my speaking career up and running but you know it's pretty it's it's pretty positive I would say but I really don't know very much about what happened back then yeah, understandable. It's pretty understandable. I know autism has been something that um, it just really just has hit home for a lot of families lately, and a lot of more children are being diagnosed with it by like four or five, and, and it is is something that's on the rise. And I know a lot of people don't have quite much education about it yet. Do you think right. there? Are, um, do you know of good resources that some, that your parents used or that you know of that you recommend that? people can go and kind of get some more education about reading on it? You could just, whatever questions you may have about it, I would just read up as many sources, read up as as many opinions as you possibly can. Because the more, the more opinions you hear and the more you read, the more you can kind of get a feel of what it actually is and how you can draw your own opinions up. If you have any questions, just type it in the search engine, and I'm sure there's some people who have wrote, written a little bit more about it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so what what about you? What particular challenges did you face growing up with autism? I had sensory issues. I had speech issues. I couldn't speak full sentences until I was around the first grade, and but I could speak occasional half sentences, but it it obviously, I obviously faced a language barrier there, and but it did not stop me from learning how to install a computer program at the age of three. I mean, I still had oh, my wow. own way of understanding the language. Impressive, Taylor. That's quite impressive, actually. I don't even think at three, I definitely was not doing that. I'm sure I was just playing with dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I saw, yeah, so pretty much, I saw in your bio that it says that you bypass a whole lot of barriers. Can you talk about some of those particular barriers that you had to break through when it came to social and academically and professionally for you? Well, it was going through public school earlier in my earlier years when autism really wasn't all that well known yet. You know, it faced, I faced a challenge. I mean, some kids, some kids said that I couldn't accomplish certain things, but I always told myself that I could. Whatever it is that I set my mind to, I know I, I'm capable of with the right plan and the right support. And that's really the most important thing, really, for anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, support is really, really good. And so, you know, this show um, has a lot of parents that are that are listening. And so a lot of them are just now maybe walking into the kids being diagnosed with some with autism and so I want to talk about like some stuff that happened maybe in your elementary and middle school years did you experience bullying and if so how did you and your parents and teachers handle that well I had a lot yes there were quite a few people that I had had issues with in my earlier elementary school and middle school years but Really, I managed to turn all those na- negative and some of what some of nasty experiences into positive learning experiences for me to take 
towards my future. I mean, you can learn so much from even the worst of situations. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, agree. I don't look at it. I don't, I try not to look at things from such a negative outlook because really at the end of the day, it really doesn't do any good and you're wasting time. <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. best to see, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I become a better individual from these situations? Yes. And so I every day is a learning yeah. experience. Yeah, I agree. I think it is. I think whether you are faced with um, autism or just faced with just life in general, I think with with the children that are in middle school age or high school age where people do begin bullying you, if you look different, sound different, not doing something that they're paying, right. eating differently, like it's, it's, it is very real. And I think like parents, um, you know, struggle to figure out like how much hands-on should I involve myself in and how this really actually affects the person. So I love the fact that you are turning this into a definitely a different perspective um, experience that it's you have. Bas- thank you. It's just basically all you can really do and do everything you can to try to make something negative into a positive and see what you can get out of it. Mm-hmm. I agree. I Even agree. if it takes re- years to realize it, you know, there's there's something out of every situation that you can learn from. Mm-hmm. Do you find yourself doing a lot of education for your community and your family members now since you're, as you've gotten older with having a better understanding of autism? I do my best to inspire and teach as many people as I possibly can about it if people have questions and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. I saw in like your um, website and your tagline it says it's not a disability; it's simply a disadvantage. So, can you explain to our Bingo. source nation what this means? It basically means a lot of people told me that I couldn't do certain things. A lot of people told me that I wasn't capable of different things, but I managed to turn those experiences into positive experiences. And I've been able to do some things that they said that I couldn't do. And so I encourage people to go after your dream, go after whatever it is you want, because you can, you can turn your story into something great. I agree. I agree. You're so, you're so positive, Taylor. It's, it's, it's so awesome just to like have that experience with you on the, on the show with someone who, um, society or people may have spoken all these different barriers, and now you've turned your experience into even organizations. And so um, speaking of those particular – well, actually, I'll jump into that, like, in, in a second. What about socially? Um, have you struggled with any particular areas areas with, um, I guess, dating or um, – I heard you mention about thanking the Lord, like, I guess, being involved in your church family or just things within the community – I'm um, having any struggles kind of in that area. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that, but really I'm still, there are some things that I continue to learn from and become better with every experience that I have in those areas. But really every, ex- I've had, sure, I'm not perfect but at the same time, I managed to learn from every experience that I could possibly learn from, from what does happen out of the things in those areas. Yes. All right. And so, Source Nation, if you are just tuning in, this is Taylor Duncan, and he is our guest tonight as we continue our series of Parenting a Child with Special Needs. And so, um, Taylor has done some awesome things with his life young man doing organizations and so many awesome things. If you would like to ask Taylor a question, the number to dial in is 619-924-0933 and press option one. That's 619-924-0933 and press option one. He'll be glad to take some questions and comments. Um, So Taylor, let's talk more about um, your particular organization. What were sure. some barriers that you had to really push past in order to just birth this organization that you are now um, a part of? I've definitely learned quite a few things from getting this organization off the ground. In fact, we're still waiting for our 501c3 status to be finalized. And so there's still some challenges, but I love what I do. 
I, I mean, I really love everything that I get to do about this organization with these great folks. And uh, really, it, some people don't. It's like I've had to learn to take turn negative experiences into positive experiences. Mm-hmm. So just because something doesn't go the way that we wanted it to or originally forecasted to doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the world. There may be some positives you might could still get out of it. So it's handling disappointment. That's probably been a big one. And then really we just, we just been on the road, hopefully climbing up the ladder. Hopefully we can expand our program. That's really what we want to do. Yes. Yes. And and so um, I agree. I think just with just starting any business, I I birthed my business like three years ago, and it was tough. It was tough just to kind of get people to just even be in my corner to believe in me. And that wasn't even the the other side of things like websites or funding or who's going to be my audience. It was just like getting someone to just believe that like you know that I have this idea and it can happen. And so. When you first wanted to begin creating this organization, I want you also to tell us, like, how did you just kind of birth this idea and, and what was your focus um, with the organization? Um, um, did you have I, support? Right. Well, I came up with the idea of, this, of something like this organization several years ago. And then when I couldn't find anything like it, I decided to go into – regular men's slow pitch softball and I had a I had a very hard time getting into that because the coaches didn't believe in me because of the autism they thought I was too much of an injury risk they thought I wasn't capable of very much so I set the bench a lot and then it took me to get online and network with some of the biggest folks in there in the sport to who did believe in me and they took the time out to really teach me the mechanics and the skills and just an, what an overall a great atmosphere is. And so my goal is to pass on those positive experiences down to these great folks who have signed up for our program. And I tell you what, so, they're loving it. <laughs> yeah. so, t- so tell Source Nation, what's the name of your organization and, and, and what type of, um, like, teens and adults that you actually have selected to be a part of this organization? Right. Well, the Alternative Baseball Organization Incorporated is a free-to-join developmental baseball program for teens and adults with autism and special needs. You can sign up online if interested for the fall season on alternativebaseball.org, or you can make a donation to PayPal and help us get where we, where we need to go to be able to expand our, our program worldwide. And what we do, we do structured practices. We do the practices and drills and all that good stuff, just like, let's say, they do in high schools, just like they do in college, just like they do in the pros. And next we have exhibition umpire games where we use Major League Baseball rules and the pace of play rules from the Atlantic League to keep the game fast and smooth and going and let them work on their time management skills a little bit and – so we and we actually have real umpires from Atlanta International Umpire Association who take part in the games as well. And it's just awesome. We use wood bats just like the pros. Now we do use an adaptive baseball. It's called a DeBeer Clincher Gym Ball that is a 12-inch variant and we've tried time and time again to get in touch with Rawlings and we haven't been able to get a response from them as to whether they still make it. We used to be able to get them from Ollie's Bargain Outlet for two bucks. Then they ran out of stock, and then we had to go to some to a private eBay seller for a much higher price. And then he ran out. And then we're trying to get in touch with Rawlings to see if he, if it's even still in project, production and see what they can do to help us. So if anybody has any connections with somebody from there, that would be great. But overall, we have fun in our games, and we also have the November 11th All-Star Game coming up in Marietta at, at Mount Perrin North Church Baseball Park, and we're trying to get the money to to broadcast the event live as well. It's going to be 
a nine inning scored game with our players with autism and special needs playing with and against professional baseball players from all over the United States. So that definitely is an awesome event. It was awesome last year, and I'm really looking forward to this year. It sounds like it. So, like, so how how long has this been? Um, how long have you been going with the organization? I guess what year did you start it? January of 2016. Oh, okay, so it's a fresh new um, program. That's awesome. So, what what have you heard from? some of the actual players about their experience on it? I mean, many of them are really enjoying it. I can tell by the looks on their faces. And it's not just about teaching them the physical skills. It's helping them grow the confidence and giving them the acceptance and the support and the encouragement needed for them to go on and go after whatever their dream may be to show them that this kind of support is available. And it's just it's just awesome. Yes, I, I love the I love idea it. of it. Mm-hmm. So, did you play softball or baseball um, when you were younger? Or was that one of your favorite sports? Because how did baseball become? Man, I've been a fan of baseball as long as I can remember. But due to my developmental delays, I couldn't play on a competitive team. Now, one coach when I was 12 in the sixth grade in middle school, he did give me a great chance to learn a lot and as much as I possibly could in one year. And I remember I even got the most improved player of the year award that year because I remember wanting to put in the work and really wanting to learn as much as I could possibly learn about it, actually experimenting with it. And then the next year a new coach took over and he encouraged me to quit because of the autism and his perception of it. And he thought I was an injury risk. So I didn't play anymore after that until I, I had started uh, slow pitch softball in 2012. And I started the organization and we transferred over to baseball in 2016. Yes. I, I think that's really great. I think to beat the odds, because I imagine so many kids don't get picked for teams or so many kids have to be this height to play on this basketball team or be this fast to run in this track meet. And so um, you never know what type of things or barriers are, are, stopping that particular progress or thing from happening. So I I love the fact that you pushed through it. And not only did you push through it, you created your own organization for those other children who have had that same experience to now be a part of that team and and play on that sport that they love. So Thank you. um, And I wanted to say I wanted to say one more thing too before you move on to the next question. During our games, we tailor it to each individual's different ability level. So some are pitched to underhand, some hit off the tee, and others are pitched to overhand at the fastest speed that they can possibly throw. Tailored to each individual with a plan to help them help them grow. I love that. So it's, it sounds like it does um, physically and mentally and socially. So do you find that your team – oh, is your team actually – I just thought about it. Are they made up of only males, or is this males and females? Right now it's only men on the team, but we would allow females if they wanted to join and participate. That's awesome. That's really awesome. So do you find that a lot, that the bond is growing, that a lot of people are making friends and it's becoming kind of a sense of family? And that's the beauty of it, is that that part of it's just awesome to see, too. And I feel like our group, at least, we've just bonded, and it's just amazing. It's like we are family. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And you know what? It's helping them with their chemistry skills that they may need when trying to hold down a job in the future. You know, they're learning to work with each other. You're right. You're right. I I work with um, a lot of athletes at the University of Georgia State University, and a lot of them have never had a job for the first time. They've always been practicing. And so um, I do a lot of assistance with them on resume building by letting them know that you can take this same particular part of being a part of this team and being on time 
and just your skill of dedication and actually put that into a job skill because you were on time, you were a part of the team, you were supportive, you were dedicated, and all those particular qualities you need in a job. So that's excellent right. that you're able to make that correlation and they're actually taking that that with them. What's the age range um, of the particular participants on the baseball team for the baseball organization? Right now you have to be 15 to join, but there's no maximum age limit. You can be 80 and still play with us. Oh, that's great. That's great. So do you have people, I guess, with that wide range, do you have people kind of coming from different particular cities and states or, or right now um, where are Right now basically around the metro Atlanta area. Okay. But we are working on a community packet for the other communities who have inquired about starting their own alternative baseball programs. We've had communities in 25 plus different states and countries ask us for our assistance. So we're working on putting together a community packet for those who really want to get something up and going. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, and I would imagine, like, people from, like, different states would definitely want to one day be a part of your organization, not only financially, but getting involved to play. Yeah, it's just amazing the participation we've had in our games. Over the last year, we've had such a wide background. I mean, we had – we had players who played slow pitch softball trying those faster speeds again. And then we've even had a player who plays cricket. He's from India and we've had two of those cricket players. They showed up in our game and man, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool watching the people who come through our organization and play with our guys and help our guys develop. I love it. So since we have a lot of our Source Nation um, family has parents, because this is like Family Mix Mondays, um, what what um, particular – what helpful advice would you offer to parents who are watching their child that has maybe special needs or autism that want to join sports? And maybe they're they're like you. They're not being picked for the team or um, or had that disability. What particular advice would you say to those parents of the of the kids who want to play? Keep on working on what you want to work on. If you really have a passion for something, go after it. Take every legal means you probably can and learn as much as you can, and really help them in every way you can think of and it will help them. Never give up on that dream. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure there are, like, lots of parents um, that really, really wanted to hear that, needed to hear that. And so um, when it comes to the particular participants on your organization, and it's actually called Alternative Baseball Organization, is that the name of the team, or do you have an actual team name that you all go by? Basically, it's – the name of this group for now, yes. Okay, nice. So what, what made you come up with that particular title, Alternative Baseball Organization? Well, for those who couldn't find another place to play the sport, we should provide an alternative. And it's a baseball organization, right? So that's how we came up with the alternative baseball organization because we provide an alternative for these folks to develop and learn and grow. Yes, I I really love it. I'm so excited for you, Taylor. And so um, definitely got so many more questions just spinning around all, um, all these particular walls that you broke past to make sure this organization is possible. Now, are you um, – sure, I know you sound like the mastermind behind this, but are you doing all of this work by yourself, or do you have a team that actually makes sure that practice runs smoothly, um, websites are up, and just different things? That we have kind of some volunteers who help us run the practices, but it's mainly me who run, who writes up the plans and the gets the events together and gets the professional guys ready in November. And I keep up the website, but we, but the organization does have a board. Yes. Who votes on major decisions. 
That's so awesome. Now, um, do the particular members on the board, do they also have autism and other special needs? Or, um, like, what? How, how were they selected based on, like, just being able to relate? Or It's a mixture of things, a mixture of being able to relate, and a mixture of experience. Okay, that's very smart. That's good. We have my mother who is who is a who is a past special ed and regular ed teacher. We we have an, another one on the board who is a firefighter. We have another one who graduated Georgia Tech with a marketing degree, and then we have somebody else on the board who worked uh, for fencing in the 1996 Olympics. Oh, awesome! That's a that's a wide so it's range. A well, I, it's a well diverse that. group. I agree. I agree. It is. Now, are you the only child? Well, I have, well, basically, yeah, I have two stepbrothers on my dad's side. Okay. And so I was wondering about, like, just kind of growing up in a household and, and, and you know, maybe if they played sports and, and you weren't able to at that time, kind of what that looked like for just kind of breaking past that wall to coming to this organization that you've now created so that everyone can have an opportunity. Right. Yes. So basically for the last few years, it's been the last majority of my life, really. It's been me and my mother living here and then my dad and other brothers uh, from his prior marriage. They live, they live about 40 miles down south. So we've been getting through bra- barriers together. Yes. I, love I think this has been really, really awesome. I love the fact that your mom um, offers her ed- education perspective. I heard you mention that she's a, she was a former special education teacher. And I think that's great. I think some of the things that actually prohibit us from either donating or just buying into things or just talking about topics is maybe the lack of knowledge. And so I myself have to even become more knowledgeable about just a wide range of things when it comes to um, special education, when it comes to um, just a lot of particular things with disabilities. And so I'm glad that your mom is able to provide that particular insight to people on yeah, the board. She's just been amazing well. for me. She's absolutely been amazing. That's so awesome. That's great. That's really um, great. So what what do you want um, – what's your hope? and goals when it comes to your alternative baseball organization? What are you, what's your vision for it to, sky's the limit for it to go to? The, you got that right. The sky is the limit, and we're hoping to use this community packet and whatever programs we decide to grow from here on out to develop the sport of baseball in all parts of the world in the autism and special needs community. Now, Temple Grandin wrote in one of her books that whenever you have a deficiency in the brain, you know, there's not a hole. There's always something superficial to fill that up. So in the midst of all this, we're finding we're finding some people who are actually pretty gifted at this, who are just now getting their first time, and we hope to be able to present present opportunities to those folks as well through our organization when we help get it up and growing. So hopefully a lot of things, but to do that, we really, we really need the support of the folks who are viewing and listening to this from home or in their car stereos to be able to do that. We need the donations to be able to get to where we want to go. Yep. And definitely will. Before we, before we head out of here, um, then I'll make sure you, have such a great opportunity to let them know how they can begin donating and come support. Cause you said that that game is in July. That's coming up. The all-star game is in November, November, November. 11th. And that's going to be in Atlanta or what? That is going to be in Metro Atlanta. Yes, ma'am. It's going to be at Mount Perrin North church baseball park, which is not very far from interstate 75. Yeah, so we'll make sure they get the address and, and your website and things like that. Um, so what, when it comes to just bypassing all the limits, pushing past the barriers that you've broken down, um, 
what has been the most rewarding things thus far in life for you? We're just pu- pushing past all these things that people have said. I'm thankful. I'm thankful those who have supported me through the years have gotten have helped me get to where I am today. I'm blessed to be where I am today, and I hope to continue growing. And the greatest thing through the organization is watching all those all these great folks in our organization have great times and you got to look at the smiles on their faces and you got to just look and see that they're giving it 110% out there every single week we're out there and just watching them have fun with it and getting to learn everything that there is to learn. I mean, it's just amazing. Mm I think so too. I I was looking at some of the particular things that you've done. That's been really awesome. And so not only are you doing things with like your alternative baseball organization, but it looks like you also speak at universities and are involved with Toastmasters. And so, um, what what's going on with those particular projects that you're working on now? Right. So I've been a member of Toastmasters International for the last year. Almost a year. It'll be a year in July. But what I've been doing to try to get more experience with public speaking is to go to all different Toastmasters clubs around Metro Atlanta to get more experience and to get different types of feedback from the different clientels around the Metro area. So that's been something I've really been working on. This last Monday, I spoke at Kennesaw United Methodist Church and then a couple of days ago, I spoke at the Toastmasters Club at Herzing University at Atlantic Square. And Thursday, I'll be going to Overton Park near Cumberland, which is where, which which is a, very near the new Brave Stadium. And then yeah, and many more awesome. after that, really trying to do what I can to get the experience. I just got my first to- Toastmasters certification when completing my prior speech at Herzing University. So I'm very yeah, thankful so, for that. Oh, oh my, my, I'm, I'm apologize. So um, for Source Nation, those parents who don't know what Toastmasters is, Toastmasters is about like public speaking and just really just getting that exposure out there. And I don't know if you heard um, Taylor say, but he said that you didn't begin speaking until what age, Taylor? I spoke occasional half sentences, but I didn't speak full sentences until probably around the first grade right so we're talking about like six seven and now being a part of Toastmasters being certified and speaking at all these universities so that's major that is so major. thank you and and that's a great accomplishment and I really hope that our parents really heard that that like no matter what people are saying even down to not being selected on the teams and now you have this alternative baseball organization like You've bypassed every single barrier that people said there's one. And I'm, I'm Thank you. positive there are many more that you're still, like, jumping over. And so, so proud of you. So before um, we go with our discussion, um, what would you like for parents to know about, like, autism? And then um, after that, just begin telling them the things that you would like for them to know about the Alternative Baseball Organization and how they can actually begin donating. To me, autism has never been what most consider a disability. It's just been a disadvantage. My advice would be to find what they're gifted in and help them all you can if that's their passion. Keep on going. Follow your dream. Probably the best advice I could probably give. And for the Alternative Baseball Organization, you can donate at the PayPal link in the upper left corner on alternativebaseball.org. And we also have some videos, so please subscribe at youtube.com slash alternativebaseball. And like us on Facebook at Alternative Baseball. And then I have my personal Facebook account that you can like at official Taylor C. Duncan. Oh, right. And so tell them um, one more time, like, where that game will be located so that we all can just feel the crowd and just come support. And I definitely will be donating as well um, to really just support. This has been really, really great. So tell them about the game mm-hmm. and um, any information there so that we can all try to come and be in the The All-Star game this year will be the second of its kind. We had the first of its kind last November. 
but the second of its kind that will feature our players with autism and special needs getting to play with and develop against professional baseball players from all over the United States. And that event will be held at Mount Perrin North Church Baseball Park, 1700 All Good Road, North Marietta, Georgia, on November the 11th. The game will start at 2 o'clock, and it's, and it's free to come with a donation. Thank you. Thank you. And so what's next for you, um, Taylor? What's what's next on your agenda? That part of we're going to keep goal? we're going to keep on going and keep on trucking, learning from new experiences every day and growing this organization as fast as, and as best as we possibly can. This is great. I'm, I'm so proud of you. And so I, I do thank you so much for just um, being a part of the series so that our Source Nation parents can really just grab some insight, hear some positive sides to if their child was diagnosed um, and, and it's not like the end, but some hope behind it. And so, so proud of your mother for her support as well and just you and your support. And so I definitely will have to get you back on another series within the year. And I just thank you so much for just being a part of our series and the discussion. And I just wish you well. And I definitely will be clicking on your PayPal link um, to to make a donation as well. Thank you. I so really you appreciate so. it. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Okay. Do you have a email address or the website link that you want to give out for any last minute? www.alternativebaseball.org. Or if you just want to go outright on PayPal, the email address is alternativebaseball at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. And so I thank you, All Taylor, right. for being a part. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. So Source Nation, that was our guest, Mr. Taylor Duncan, and he had a lot of great things to say. Um, He is a person who was diagnosed with autism, who is just pushed past so much. And I really hope you got a lot out of it. And I really hope you heard his passion and just bypassing all those barriers um, that he's pushed past. So please definitely go and donate and just support the Alternative Baseball Organization because it needs to be more than in Georgia. It needs to be on so many places. I can imagine parents um, getting disappointing news that a child can't apply for this team because of this and that. And so here's someone who said, well, you know, let me make an alternative one. And so definitely please go and support. Um, I do have a poem. And so also please send me emails or please send me just messages on Twitter at B or my email at um, jabryant1913 at gmail.com um, website, www.b3performances.com. Um, as always, I'll definitely be able to answer any questions and would love um, any suggestions that people may have. My poem for the evening is parents of children with special needs create their own world of happiness and believe in things that others cannot yet see. I'm not sure who wrote that quote, but it speaks volumes to Taylor. And so um, I want you to continue tuning in, and next week we'll finish up our series of parenting a child with special needs. So tune back in next week for Family Mix Mondays with Teacher Bryant. Thank you. Yo! Yeah.